I'm uh, really very, very glad to be speaking here. Uh, it took quite a bit of convincing Spencer to have this uh, at all. Um, you know, several uh, discussions, debates, and so on. But finally, we are here, and it's great to uh, talk. And also, this uh, you know, to talk uh, sequentially in time. Uh, you know, along the line of students, that also is great. Uh, in the morning, we had uh, this talk by Shumit, where he said uh, some wonderful things about uh, their uh, Chicago experience together, and uh, Avinash, Sanjay, uh, Shanks. Uh, in, in, it's, so, you know, great, great stories. Of course, this is meant to be a scientific talk with a bit of uh, reminiscence, so here comes a bit of reminiscence. Uh, so, when I joined uh, TIFR, my interest was not in quantum field theory at all. I wanted to, class to classical general relativity. Uh, my interest was in differential geometry. I was studying classical mechanics from the book of Abraham and Marsden. I don't know how, how many of you even know the existence of this book, but it exists. It teaches classical mechanics through differential geometry. That was the kind of person I was. And <clears throat> anyway, so I was talking to uh, people in the department of astrophysics where people would do classical general relativity. And in the middle of all this, Avinash uh, one morning told me that uh, you should talk to Spenta. Okay. So I went and talked to Spenta. And he, I was 21. And, uh, he told me about spin systems, quantum field theory, uh, Kadanov, all in one go, more or less. And, uh, you know, I didn't know much of what he was saying, but basically it blew me. You know, it blew me away from classical, any desire to do classical general relativity for a long, <laughs> for a, for a long time. <laughs> Till we were doing this black hole uh, solution in Princeton, and I was back to my favorite book, which is sometimes called The Telephone Directory, Lisner, Lisner Thorne, and Wheeler. And I like, uh, you know, I, I, I was amazed to see that Spenta really liked some chapters of that book. And I should say that secretly, or not so secretly, he's actually an admirer of general relativity, classical general relativity, even all of mathematics and various other classical things like classical music, painting, and, uh, and you know, uh, come what may, everything is. And of course, some things were garbage, as um, Sanjay mentioned. Uh, but anyway, so after the discussion, I didn't understand my, much. It went uh, pretty much above my head. But I, I uh, sort of latched onto one thing, which was that uh, oh, by the way, I should say that I was studying quantum field theory, trying to study quantum field theory from books like uh, Idzikson and Zubair and uh, Bjork and Andrell. And uh, I, I couldn't make uh, much sense out of uh, you know, what was being said. It, uh, you know, take pi, take pi, this, that. I, I didn't quite understand what was going on. So he mentioned one thing which I understood, which is that Wick theorem is just Gaussian integrals. And Feynman diagrams, were basically just uh, working around Gaussian integrals. So that, that's something that I understood because the words I understood. Then I put uh, two of two, uh, two and two together, and I found that really, you know, theorem is Gaussian integrals. And uh, soon enough, we uh, sort of started a project in which we had to do some very. This is Sanjay, uh, Spenta, and me. This was uh, uh, trying to find a representation of uh, Virazuru algebra in an arbitrary uh, curved background. So before that, they had done this pioneering work uh, on conformal invariance on um, uh, group manifolds. But this is an arbitrary uh, curved manifold. Lots and lots of Feynman diagrams had to be done. But of course, these are all you know, working around Gaussian integrals. So it gave me enough confidence that, OK, bosonic Feynman diagrams are no big deal. And however, there was a factor of half which was not coming. And Spenta, of course, had this gut feeling that uh, what we were doing was, of course, right. Uh, 
uh, but we didn't have that. So one sort of trudged on and on and on. And one day at 3 a.m., the solution came. Some other half came from somewhere else and made that into one. So it was 3 a.m., and I ran, and I knocked at Spenta's door. Spenta opened. He didn't know what to do, what to do with me. <laughs> so thanks, Spenta, for putting up with all that. So anyway, so that began uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, life of uh, friendship uh, together. So this, uh, you know, very, very uh, dominating and this, that, um, so on. I didn't quite feel with uh, uh, Spenta uh, most of the time. Some of the time, yes, of course. And um, maybe by then, you know, he had mellowed down. I, I was like the fourth person who worked closely uh, with him in line. So he was willing to stand corrected uh, off and on. Uh, so now, <laughs> so I'll share with you some uh, uh, picture. So here it is. So I learned many things from Spenta. So clearly we are discussing physics here. <clears throat> and the summary of the discussion is here. <clears throat> and so let me re read out the first message which Spenta sent me, uh, as sent me on WhatsApp. Uh, it, I remember it, so I don't have to read it out. It says, let's write paper right away. So we are working on something, and he, this is how he says it. So he learned this way of saying paper from uh, Bunji Sakita. So now he uh, uh, taught it to me, so hopefully I'll know, sort of uh, uh, hand down the thing. So now I'll talk about what we are going to write paper uh, right away. <laughs> I don't know whether right away or not. So this is what it is. So excuse me, something happened to the, ah, there's the title page. So I'm going to talk about the SYK model, some, some uh, attempt at trying to understand uh, bulk dual to the SYK model, which you heard about, so the, it was, uh, you know, introduced and uh, summarized very nicely uh, in the morning, so I'm not going to sort of, uh, how much time do I have? Well, um, so yeah, so the SYK model is, you know, it can be thought of as uh, a one-dimensional static model with Majorana fermions and disorder, so this is uh, how it looks like, so there's a time hopping here, and this is a single site uh, interaction. There can be four fermions, or there can be any even number of fermions. So the larger the number of fermions, there's some simplification. But I'm not going to uh, go into that detail here. And this GIJKL is some random coupling. Okay. And it's the, uh, the distribution of GIJKL is given by a Gaussian distribution with this half wave. Now at large n, important observables, uh, uh, this is the important observable which is the uh, bilinear of uh, uh, these fermions. These are Majorana fermions, so you have to have them at two separated points. So this is a bilinear, bilocal uh, fermion. And uh, so this, uh, is a, these are the schwinger dyson equations satisfied by this. So this, is a, this is like a propagator, so this is a two-point function. So this is a, a schwinger dyson equation. The self-energy, as, as everybody can recognize this, and it is a quartic uh, theory, so therefore the self-energy in position space is just a cube of the propagator. So it corresponds to three lines uh, in the loop. So there's a, uh, you know, so a lot of uh, literature here. Uh, many of these people are uh, uh, here in this conference, and there are also variants, uh, variants of SYK model without disorder. So uh, at strong coupling, the theory, uh, you know, develops. So basically, strong coupling corresponds to large values of J, and uh, the theory uh, has an emergent reparameterization invariance. So the Schwinger Dyson equation uh, simplifies to this, this equation, as, as you can clearly see, that if you, uh, uh, you know, assign some uh, transformation property to G as a sort of bilocal tensor of weight. Uh, one over four, then uh, this equation is invariant like that. Okay, so 
delta is equal to one fourth here. To begin with, fermions had uh, dimension zero here, but they become an order of Okay, so this uh, IR, uh, you know, st strong coupling, and this is where all the interest is because this is supposed to be dual to uh, gravity. And uh, so, uh, let me just say some of, some of the salient things which we'll try to. Uh, uh, so, uh, so that the equation, this equation has a, a reparameterization invariance, uh, but the, the, this is a solution, okay, which goes as one over tau to the power of half. As you would expect from conformal invariance, as the power law uh, behavior of the two point function. So, this uh, breaks spontaneously because it's a solution of a large n classical equation uh, from uh, diff to SL2. And uh, interestingly, the goldstones of uh, this diff mod SL2, uh, okay, they have zero action. That is to say, here, if you think of these as pions, the pion kinetic energy term uh, uh, does not appear, it's just zero. So, however, if you break uh, the, you know, this uh, uh, diff symmetry, if you go away from the j equal to infinity point, if you turn on our some 1 over j, then, uh, you know, you pick up some uh, Goldstone uh, action term, which is given by this famous Schwarzian uh, term here, and it's proportional to 1 over j because that's the symmetry breaking parameter. Okay, so, this, you should think of this not as a pion kinetic term, but more like pion mask. And at finite temperature, it becomes like that. So features. So the interesting features of this, which we, we are going to sort of uh, focus on, zero temperature entropy, uh, it, it, so this model possesses a zero temperature entropy, which all the speakers in the morning um, sort of emphasized. And uh, so that, that's that. Um, okay. So this is, um, in, so that's of course extensive. And uh, so th this is a surprising feature for a static model, and, but that this has been described. So, and there's a universal low energy sector, which is described by Schwarzian, as I said. And this model, uh, you know, describes uh, chaotic uh, behavior, uh, which is given by a Lyapunov expo exponent, which saturates a bound uh, discovered recently by Alderson, Schenker, and Stanford, uh, which is 2 pi over beta. So this uh, model satisfies that. It has a radius spectrum, which uh, you might think that, you know, it, uh, so therefore it's probably string theory, or the so-called Vasiliev model, but it actually has interestingly different properties. So towards a bulk tool, so let's say that, uh, um, so we would like to, you know, sort of reproduce some of these uh, these features. So the starting point could be that this is a one-dimensional CFT. So therefore, uh, you know, the natural dual for one-dimensional CFT would be ADS2. Uh, and in ADS2, so this was described in the context of supersymmetric black holes in great detail by uh, Ashok uh, here and Atish. Uh, <coughs> so on. So, but in, uh, you know, one feature of uh, one-dimensional CFT is that if the trace of the stress tensor is equal to zero, so there, since there is only one direction, uh, so the stress tensor itself is zero, and uh, therefore the Hamiltonian is zero. So all states are basically ground states. So in order to have non-trivial dynamics, you need to explicitly break conformal invariance or diff invariance. And this is done in the SYK model, as I say, by turning on some small one over j. And uh, so one uh, class of bulk models is called the Jackie utility title poem. Uh, dilaton gravity model is not too dissimilar to the uh, you know dilaton gravity model which we had looked at in the context of the uh, black hole solution so you think of the ads2 um, uh, here as a rising of uh, you know as, as a near horizon geometry of a higher dimensional near external black hole and uh, so you you sort of reproduce some of the features uh, here in uh, of the low line uh, spectrum. Our approach is the following. So, um, <clears throat> so the low energy configurations of uh, SYK, I don't know whether you can see this, this the color is strange. Um, so the low energy uh, configurations are generated by uh, diffeomorphism elements, f of tau, and as I said, they, they behave uh, 
uh, you know how to, you, you know, when you have an f of tau, you know how to uh, apply that on a particular solution. So you can start from the uh, solution, which is given by the two-point function I said, one over tau to the power half, and you can apply uh, a diff element, and you generate an orbit. Okay, so this is like a diff orbit of that E naught, uh, which is that power law for. Okay, so this is, so this is a space of zero modes, and uh, as I said before, that a potential is created in this, uh, so these are all flat directions without symmetry breaking, and with a symmetry breaking, it picks up this fire mass term given by Schwarzschild. So we would like to sort of see how to, uh, you know, implement uh, uh, this in a bulk. So just a bit of uh, uh, history. So what we do here is that, uh, that something similar was done before is uh, the orbits of ADS3. Uh, these are Vira0 cross Vira0 orbits of ADS3, and these, uh, you know, corresponded to the ground Heno geometry. So there's a lovely story about how to understand the action in the space of these geometries. So it was given by the sort of, uh, you know, quiet joint orbit action, uh, which turns out to be, uh, you know, Wesumino Witten um, action, uh, you know, on these ground Heno geometries. I can tell you that. Uh, private later on, but uh, this uh, matches very nicely with, uh, you know, Witten's description of uh, 3D gravity as chance in this. So we would like to do something similar. So that's uh, what, uh, uh, you know, let's, so let's begin my work here, uh, is that, uh, so this is what the picture is. So this is what we have in the SYK model in the field theory, and so, uh, we start from ADS2, okay, so it's like the ADS2 vacuum, and we uh, apply, uh, you know, this uh, F transfer, the diff transformation on that, okay. And it is indeed possible to do this exactly, uh, okay, in a manner not too dissimilar to uh, what happens in higher dimensions, and these are the exact dimensions, okay. Now we have to find out a potential function in the space of this to be able to do dynamics, okay. Um, so, uh, so some properties, so all these metrics represent normalizable distributions. Okay, this is a word uh, from EDS-CFT, uh, and they're in the pfefferman graham gauge, and the way it is done is by inventing a large gauge transformation, which takes this f of tau in a boundary theory, and takes this diffeomorphism from a one-dimensional diffeomorphism to a two-dimensional. There are horizons in this uh, new uh, geometry given by this uh, thing. Um, so what is the action in the space of this, uh, this matrix? So something that I cannot explain in great detail. So this, uh, you know, is, um, as, uh, so let me just claim this. I can, I can show, uh, explain it later on in private that these diff orbits actually turn out to be coadjoint orbits, okay? So these are some kind of, um, uh, you know, configuration space in which you need the group transformation to act in a certain way that you can form a, a scalar product, and this gives you a natural uh, definition of a symplectic form, and therefore you can write, so this is called the Kirillov action, and you can write an action uh, on that. Now, it turns out that the Kirillov action for, uh, you know, the, the, the coadjoint uh, orbit action of diff uh, is given by Polyakov's induced gravity uh, theory. So this is how the theory looks like. It's a two-dimensional uh, bulk action, and there is a boundary term. Two-dimensional bulk action, which, uh, which is like R root G, of course, does not have any dynamics because they're topological, but this theory is R one over box uh, times R, and, um, so, uh, and this, is the, this boundary term is similar to uh, Gibbons Hawking term. So that's the, that's the theory. This is the uh, action which, is, which will describe for us, which hopefully, the um, potential in the space of the gold star. That's the idea, okay? So to get going, we uh, choose a conformal gauge, and this is how it looks like. So you can read off the Liouville action from here. I'll just take one moment. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So what we find is that, uh, 
yeah so to, so now the so first of all uh, these these um, uh, space of the um, you know this uh, brown henna like geometries that i described in uh, in two dimensions given so uh, i forgot to mention one thing which is that uh, in the metric itself okay interestingly the schwarzian term appear, appears okay i just uh, forgot to mention that now um, so here okay so first of all let me say that if you just um, take phi equal to 0 and take for this g hat this fiducial metric okay the this uh, this uh, brown henna type matrix uh, then you can compute the on shell action and the on shell action turns out to be essentially the same as if the diff transformation has done so what i'm trying trying to say is that if you take ads2 and switch on the diff transformation then the on shell action does not change okay so this is equivalent to the statement uh, of the syk statement that the goldstones are zero action without symmetry breaking now there is a way we find of the explicit symmetry breaking which is that uh, we turn on the Liouville uh, mode so um, you know so these are the normalizable so, so the Liouville solutions can be characterized by uh, theta zero cross theta zero symmetry because the Liouville theory itself is a conformal field theory so the bulk the two dimensional field theory <coughs> which is a conformal field theory and is given by a g of z a holomorphic uh, um, function and an anti holomorphic function and this is the uh, solution so this is actually the solution is related to what is called the bucklund transformation and uh, so the normalizable solutions are given by some rule like that and non normalizable solutions are given by some rule like this and uh, the solutions are subject to philosophical constraints you have to uh, impose and uh, now we re repeat the computation of the on shell Kirillov action and we find that the uh, on shell action is actually proportional to the uh, symmetry breaking term times the Schwarzian exactly like in the SYK uh, model so we re recover that uh, that physics we also recover uh, some important features of the thermodynamics that we, 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 we put this uh, model on a, on a circle. So this time we uh, Euclidianize and compactify. And uh, so the on shell action, uh, you know, shows a zero temperature entropy. And uh, it also shows, um, uh, you know, a linear uh, temperature term. I forgot to put the dot, dot, dots. So this is the low temperature uh, form of the action. This again has the same uh, features as the SYK low temperature thermodynamics. So let me go to, I'm sorry. OB is a Newton constant, one over B squared. So uh, B squared is just a Newton constant, Gn. So this is, this is to be identified with the N. So the mod modulo numbers. So the, so the numbers here, okay, do not work out so far. So this log two, this is the inverse. Okay, so th there's a lot of stuff I didn't say. There were, so there are there are divergent terms here, which we um, uh, you know sort of take care of by holo um, uh, what is called holographic counter terms, holographic renormalization, and you can have constant terms coming from there. So yeah, so but not not for this, not for, not for the not for the uh, zero temperature part. This, this is what, so far from what we see, this is uh, what we get. So th this number here, okay, if I uh, identify B squared exactly with uh, one over B squared exactly with N, okay, this is our zero. But there might be, you know, so uh, the, the counter term issue, okay, we have not completely settled. So let me, let me now say this. So the counter term issue is not completely settled. So, uh, you know, uh, there, so far as we know now, okay, this is what. Uh, um, all right. Uh, so conclusion. So we identified the coadjoint orbits of ADS2 under diff as a space of Goldstones, uh, and then uh, the coadjoint orbit action, which is the induced gravity action, that's as the uh, sort of action for the Goldstones. Uh, <coughs> as I said, 
just ADS2 plus diff transformations uh, has the same on-shell action, but you uh, turn on a non-normalizable Liouville mode. I forgot to specify that non-normalizable Liouville mode is like turning on an irrelevant operator. That we can explicitly check. So this, uh, it sources an irrelevant operator. That's easy to see. So this coincides with the Schwarzian of SYK. This I already said. The low temperature thermodynamics has come out. So do, uh, you know, because the Virozoro constraints are very strong constraints, uh, you know, in order to have non-trivial excitations, we need to couple matter to Liouville. This, of course, then is not universal. Okay. So, uh, so we, we are working on that right now, uh, trying to understand, uh, you know, the analytical understanding of long-time dynamics, uh, such as the, uh, you know, the, this uh, spectral form factor and so on and so forth. Hopefully, Spenta will join this one also, and uh, lots more. Okay. Um, thank you. <clears throat>